I made these a while back when I thought like Dumbo ears on vases were cool. Hey Dirty Potters, how are you today? Today we're going over the final stage of our Grease and Amphora vase shape section. Now if you've been following along with the rest of the videos and you finally got to this final shape right here, it's now time to do the ears of the vase. The ears of the vase are actually extremely easy because the only thing you really need to know how to do is to attach clay onto a surface, which means of course you're gonna have to go through the scoring and slipping phase, but by the time you get to vases, you should have already gone through that. The ear section of the vase is most likely the easiest part of making your vase, because you've already made the tough part. You've already made your form. The fun part about making the ears to your vase is that you don't really have to be a pure potter. You can be a sculptor, you can be a crafter, you can essentially attach anything to the sides of your vase, as long as it's pretty much attached at the shoulder. And I do mean anything. When I was going through my sculptor phase, I just took Took off two pieces of clay, made sure the sculpts are really nice and neat, and just put these ears on this side of this vase right here. Oh, but I didn't stop there. At some point, I started to get a little bit more creative with my ears, and I even started breaking off little pieces of gems and putting them on as ears to my vases. My main reason for showing you these two things is to really get into the point that not everything has to be handles on the side of your vase in order for it to count as a handled vase. You can sculpt or even use actual items as the handles to your vases, as long as you understand how to attach them. So today, we're gonna go over the very basic way on how to attach those handles. Not these ones though, you guys aren't ready to attach crystals. First, let's go over the most basic type of handles when most people think of handles on a vase, which is this type, the regular old handles. Potter tip! I highly suggest while you're trimming your vase, if you do plan to trim your vase that is, that you pull your handles right before you trim your vase. Pulling your handles before you trim your vase and before you actually plan to attach them is a nice way for them to be a little bit more stable. Let them dry a tiny bit before you decide to attach them. If you don't let your handles dry out and you try to attach them directly after you pull your handles, it's going to look a little bit like this. You're going to end up pulling your handle and it's going to be way too wet to actually hold stability of any shape or form. It's going to wiggle all over the place. You're going to try to attach it and it's going to look a little bit nice for a second, but then it's most likely going to just fall over or slump over a little bit. So let's pull our handles right now. After you've pulled your handles and let them dry a little bit, it's time to attach them to the sides. Potter tip! Usually you're going to be attaching your handles either to the neck or the shoulder of the vase. It honestly looks extremely silly if you have handles down here. Yes, it might be a little bit creative and inventive, but your handles are going to look much better if you have them up here, where a normal vase usually has them. I mean, having your handles way down here might look good for some modern art museums, but this just looks stupid. Try to keep the handles of your newly pulled form either to the shoulder or a little bit higher than the shoulder. Sometimes even the neck works out. I always find it extremely helpful to put my newly pulled handle right behind the vase and then slowly kind of form it and cut it off to what I want it to look like. I know that's a little bit confusing, so here's an example. Go ahead and take your pulled handle and put it right behind your vase. Now it'll slowly start to disappear behind your vase, but if you like the way this looks right here and you want these handles to stick out really far, go ahead and make a cut line right here on the very side of where you like that visual effect. And this right here is where I'm going to score and slip those handles. But if I wanted it a little bit shorter, all I have to do is make sure that I'm looking at it a little bit more into the vase, just like this. And if I wanted a little bit of a shorter handle right there, I would then just cut it off right here. This is a trick that I use not only for vases, but I use it for cups a lot as well. Of course, if I'm looking at it from your direction, I'm most likely going to be picking up this vase and then putting it directly behind the vase somewhere just to make sure I know where the cutoff line is. If I like it a little bit short, I'll put it right there. If I like it a little bit longer, I'll put it right there. But I will cut it off at a certain point of the clay body. I think I'm gonna put my handles right at the shoulder right here.
and you see these lines right here are a reminder of where I'm going to cut the clay body off and at what angle. If you're not confident that you made the same size cutoff line for each piece of clay, what you can always do is turn one around, overlap one with the other one, and just trace over a single cutoff line. This will make very sure that not only are you getting the same exact piece of clay off of one cut, but it also makes sure that your cutoff lines are exactly the same and at the same angle. You see, and now they are the exact same size. Now all you have to do from this point on, considering that you've trimmed the bottom of your piece, is score and slip these two little pieces right here, take them apart, and make sure that they're put on the sides of your vase. You see, and there you go. All you really have to do is pull your handles, score and slip them on, make sure that they're calibrated to be nice and even, and you're good to go. Now, if you're not too good or comfortable at pulling handles, you can always do what I did with the other vase earlier and just make a slab and carve out any shape you want. For example, You can even take two little balled up pieces of clay that you cut off from a slab, go ahead, score and slip those up, and attach them right to the sides of your vase. You see, you can pretty much stick anything to the shoulders of a nice vase and it'll look just fine as long as you score and slip them properly and make sure they have a good bond. Well thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. This one should be a fairly quick episode because all you really have to know how to do is to score and slip any shape onto the sides of a vase. If you're good at pulling handles, you can make proper handles. But if you're not, you can always roll out a nice little slab of clay like this one here, make any shape you want, and as long as you score and slip properly to the sides of your vase, you should be good to go. If you'd like to see any of my artwork or join the Potter community on the Facebook page, the links are always down below for your beautiful Potter eyes to see. And I will see you, Dirty Potters, next week. I'm going to keep this. I am actually going to keep this. Some somebody's going to get this for Christmas.